Alhamdulillahirabbil alamin. Allahumma lakal hamdu ala ni'matil Islam wal iman. Wa lakal hamdu an ja'alat an ja'altana min ummati Muhammadin alai salatu wassalam. Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'idhu. Wa na'udzu billahi min syururi anfusina min sayyiati a'malina. Man yahdihillahu fala mudilla lahu wa man yudlil fala hadiyalah. Wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh Nashadu annahu balagu risalah Wa addal amanah wa nasahal ummah Allahumma salli wa salli wa barik ala sinna muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in amma ba'du Fahiyya ibadullah usikum bitaqullah Faqad faza al-muttaqun يقول الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم بعد أن نستعيذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن المتقين في جنات وعيون آخذين ما آتهم ربهم إنهم إنهم كانوا قبل ذلك محسنين كانوا قليلا من الليل ما يهجعون وبالأسحار هم يستغفرون وفي أموالهم حق للسائل والمحروم وفي الأرض آيات للموقنين وفي أنفسكم أفلا تبصرون وقال أيضا واتقوا الله وأعلموا أنكم إليه تشرون ومن يتق الله يجعل له من أمره يسرا جبذس وين رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم هيسن مؤاد بن جبل Mu'ad bin Jabal is one sahaba who joined the Aqaba treaty. He became Muslim, he was 18. And he had good looking, tall, like one speech. So when he <coughs> sent him to Yemen, uh, he escorted him until the gate of Medina. And then he said, he looked at him, he said, Innaka asa an la talqani ba'da ami hadha. ولا ألك تمر بمسجدي أو هذا أو بقبري فبكى مؤذ. سمعت maybe you ma you won't see me anymore after this year. When you return to Medina, you only will see my masjid and my grave. So مؤذ weeping, he was crying. And then he said, رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم cool him down. And then he asked him, Ya Mu'ad, Bima taqdi. How you will judge? How are you going to judge the people when this issue comes to you? When somebody asks your fatwa, somebody asks a question. Qala aqdi bi kitabillah. I'm going to judge according to the Quran. But if you cannot find it in the Quran, he said, Aqdi bi sunnatillah, bi sunnati Rasulullah sallam. I'm going to judge according to the sunnah. If you cannot find in the Sunnah, he said, "Attahidu bi ra'yi." I'm going to use my my independent judgment, my intellect. The brother and sister, because of this hadith, the Muslim scholars they wrote the volumes of the books in the conclusion of this. And then Muad said, "Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam." Said to him, Alhamdulillah, Alladhi wafaqa rasoolah rasoolillah lima yardo rasoolillah. He said, Praise be to Allah who renders sweet tables messenger, the messenger of Rasulullah sallam. And he praised him. Then Ma'ad said, he looked at me. He stared for a long time. He said, I was so happy because if you look at me with the stares, I never forget in my life this beautiful face. And then he said, Ya Mu'ad, Inni la uhibbuka, Inni la uhibbuka, Inni la uhibbuka. Mu'ad, no doubt, surely I love you, I love you, I love you. Imagine if your father said to you, your mother, somebody that you dear to him. And he said, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then Mu'ad said, Wallahi, Ya Rasulullah, I love you too. And then he said, Ya Mu'ad, don't forget every after salat to recite the following dua. Allahumma a'inni 
ala zikrika wa syukrika wa husni ibadatik three time wallah please help me to remember you to thank to you to be better in my worship dear brothers from this dialogue or conversation between muad bin jabal and rasulullah sallallahu we can conclude a few lessons number one when Rasulullah asked him, said, if you cannot find the Quran and Sunnah, and he said, I'm going to use my intellect. In Arabic called Al-Ittihad. And it's very, very important. Because Rasulullah, he knew Mu'ad going to a, a country that totally different than Medina. He's going to have a lot of challenge. And it is not easy to give a judgment. And Alhamdulillah, Rasulullah Salama, he was successful in educate his companion. Because after he passed away, the Sahaba, he know how to handle the Ummah. He make election, he choose the leaders. When 70 of Hufad passed away, you know, they have Mashura, and they collected the Quran in one book. Even Umar bin Khattab, he was very intelligent in, in using the Itihad. During his time, anybody said to his wife, I divorce you, I divorce you, I divorce you, three times, become three times. The original ruling is only one time. If you say to your wife, I divorce you a hundred times, it's one time. But Umar looked at in Arabic called Al Fiqhul Waqi. So when, when the ulama, the scholar, the faqih, make a judgment, not only based on Fiqhul Shara'i, Quran and Sunnah, but also they need to make judgment according to fiqhul waqi, the reality, the environment, the condition when they live. That's Umar. And Umar also did not give a, a portion zakat to the convert on the time. Because many people become Muslim just for money. This is danger for Islam on the time. Right? And also, <coughs> it's very important for us who live here. And many people sometimes he live here, and I ask fatwa from the sheikh in Egypt, in Saudi Arabia, in Indonesia, it's not work. Because those sheikh didn't know what condition in this country. Right? For example, in dealing with the, with the halal and haram, with the meat and all this, and somebody, someone talk about the, about the uh, marijuana, it is a new issue. You know, when... Uh, this weed become legal in, instead. So my student asked me, it is halal? No. <laughs> I said, no, but see, they, need, they, need, they need dalil. I said, it's in Bakura 195, in Al-Ma'idah 190, but there's no marijuana, you know, no weed, no on that, but you have to eat the hard. Right? How to how to, to make analogy between the word homer, for example, with the weed. Yeah. And few, I think two months ago, somebody came to me, Sheikh, I think an election in America is haram, Sheikh. I said, why haram? Well, I asked the Sheikh in Saudi Arabia, I said, haram, this is a kafir country. You cannot do it. I said, subhanAllah. You know, why don't ask Imam here? The Sheikh will live here where election is very important for Muslim. You know, when, if, you, if people want to respect you, to hear your voice, you have to be involved. Like Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam. You know, he was alone a Muslim, but he was involved in everything. Right? So this is very important. So therefore, Imam Malik, when he was in Makkah, and somebody asked about an issue, he said, ask the Imam here. Ahlu Makkah adro biturukha. The ulama of Makkah, he know better than me about. Yeah. So that's the first lesson we learn from the, what happened with Mu'ad bin Jabal. And the second also we learn from here, the Rasulullah SAW, he always observed his companion. And he, he always with them. And he give direction, you know, guideline. And give the way for anybody who have talents. And, and Rasulullah said also, he praised their talents of the privilege Allah was given to him. For example, he said, 
Arham ummati bi ummati Abu Bakar. The most merciful among my 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 ummah to my ummah is Abu Bakar. And he said wa ashaddahum fi amri Allah Umar. And he said the sternness among my people in regard to the command of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala is Umar. Wa asdaqum hayaan Uthman. And the most shy you know among my people is Uthman bin Affan. Wa alamahum bil halal wa haram Mu'ad bin Jabal. The one have the most knowledgeable concerning Sharia is Mu'ad bin Jabal. Right? Wa afradahum Zaid bin Thabit. The most dutiful you know is Zaid bin Thabit. Wa aqrabuhum Ubay bin Ka'ab. The best reciter who have knowledge about about the reciting of Quran is Ubay bin Ka'ab. Walikulli ummatin amin wa amin hadil ummah Abu Ubaidah bin Jarrah. Yeah, if uh, for every nation is trustworthy, and the most trustworthy of my ummah in Abdullah, and so on and so on. So the Sulaiman, this is very important for us. We have children, so you have to give way, give direction to your children what the talent they have, right? And also we have youth in community. You have to give them responsibility, because our youth also they have different kind of challenge. The third lesson we learn that in Islam, you have to express when, when you have feeling, it's really positive feeling. So what Rasulullah said? I said, Ya Mu'ad, I love you, I love you, I love you. How many of us that express to your brothers and sisters that I love you? Right? One day Rasulullah was sitting with his companion, a man passed by. Ya Rasulullah, Wallahi, I love this man. So did you tell him? I said, no, go tell him. You know, you, you know the effect when you, say, when you are serious and seek somebody here and say, brother, hebuka fillah. They will affect him. And also, the reward by saying sincerely is great. In the hadith said, there is 70,000 people who enter Jannah hand by hand together. And he said, who? Right? Al-mutuhabuna fillah. Those who love one another for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember, as, 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 uh, among the seven people who are under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So imagine one of you, Allah said, come here. Uh, what? Yami, remember he said to your brother, I love you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is your shade. Yeah. And it also for your family, your wife, your children, we have to express that. You know, many of you are traveling. When you are in a plane, almost take off, take your wife. Honey, I love you. I miss you. I care about you. When you arrive, yeah, tell you, especially for your daughters. Woman is different. They need it. Rasulullah, he understood that. He always said this. If Rasulullah, one week, he didn't say nothing to Aisha, Aisha said, you still love me? Aisha asked it. Woman always worry. That might be your change. Right? And also, in Yemen, Mu'ad bin Jabal, he did face a lot of challenging. What they call now Islamophobia. Is it true? Some people claim to be, to be prophets. People have new idea. So Islam under attack. How did, how did uh, Mu'ad deal with all this Islamophobia? Because he knew our Quran exactly. He did very well. He handled very well. He not reacted emotionally, you know. And he also he focused for something. What did he focus? Bina ul fard, bina ul ummah. He built the, the, the Muslim individually in his ummah. And he was successful. He had many students, thousands of them, and become good people after that. In the Quran, Allah mentioned that how you deal with Islamophobia. You know, when. when <coughs> People, be, you know, enter Islam in Marina almost every day. And among them, the Jews, the rabbis. So for the rabbis and the Jewish leaders, this is dangerous. Because you now their influence is gone. Also money. Right? Because many of people in Medina, they give donation also. They ask them for fatwa. So every Friday and Saturday, 
you know, their congregation is full, no become less and less. And Allah said in the Quran, وَدَّكَثِيرٌ مِّنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ لَوْ يَرُدُّونَكُمْ مِّنْ بَادِ إِمَانِكُمْ كُفَّارٌ حَسَدًا It's a majority of the people of the book, they wish, they want it, that you become disbelief, become unbelievers after you have belief. Right? Hasadan min in the anfusim out of envy. Because it was expected that Muhammad will come from them, but Muhammad will come from Ismail. Right? Mimbadi Mayata Bayana Law Mullah after the truth came to them. Right? So they provoke, they they do like what now might be like Fox News and all is the same. Right? But what Allah instruction? How to deal with that? Subhanallah. Allah said. To deal with Islamophobia, fafu was fahu hatta yati Allahu bi amri. He said, pardon and overlook. That means ignore them. You know, one day somebody sent me email with all website. Sheikh, we have to do something. What? Look it. I said, Sheikh, I said, Sheikh, I answered, said, are you going to wasting your time? It's not only this thousand of website and bloggers and you know, TV and all this. Follow the Quran. Ignore them. Because as soon as you answer, right, well, somebody was also sent me a video. Somebody was insulted, Muhammad insulted everything. She said, you have to watch this. I said, subhanAllah, if you watch that and then you ask everybody, they're going to hit one million people. And you, 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 do you make them successful? Ignore them. That's the Quran said. Right? She said, what do I have to do? Look at the next ayah. Wa aqimus salah. Allah said, establish salat. Try to improve the quality of your salat. To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because many, even some Muslim, they pray for 25 years. They didn't know the meaning of all the salat. When they asked somebody, they said, what iya kana abudu? Oh, what's that? I said, what you read when you mostly, inna atayna. I said, okay. What is abtar mean? Oh, 25 years. What subhanallah mean? What tahiyyat mean? And how you can to communicate with Allah, you don't understand even a word. Allah said that, establish salat. And also it's very important, sometimes Muslims are very enthusiastic to make demonstration. To, I remember when they have uh, in Syria, and they make meeting until 3 o'clock for tomorrow. And then they miss Fajr. Subhanallah. You're going to do something, and you not good with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And say, وَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَىٰ وَأَتُ الزَّكَةِ And pay zakat. That means you have to work hard, you have good income, and make sure it's halal. Right? That's it. No. He said, وَمَا تُقَدِّمُوا لِأَنفُسِكُمْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ تَجِدُهُ إِنَّ اللَّهِ So whatever invest for yourself, any good thing that you do, Right? You'll find with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That means in this ayah mean you have to be care about what's going on in this country. You know, this is your country. You know the Prophet Allah said, Ya Kaumi, Ya Kaumi. To the to people who are against him, he still can Ya Kaumi. Oh American, you are my people. Because whatever good comes to this country is good for everybody, for us. So we have to be care with all the issues that we have. The black matter, police uh, brutality, about any issue about the homeless, building the, the houses for the, for the needy. We have to be involved. This is the meaning of this ayah. We have to engage. Right? And that's how to. And the last one, inshallah, we have to fix everything. To fix between your husband and wife and the children. You know, be a good Muslim. Be when people see you, I want to be like them. أقول قول هذا واتر لي ولكم أدعو الله أنتم ممكن بجاب الحمد الحمد يا في نعمك في مزيد يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجل وجهك وعديم سلطانك إن الله ملائكة يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه 
The brother and second husband, I would like to share uh, one of my friends, his sheikh, also sent me a uh, very good uh, uh, story. And in solo we can learn a lot. It is a true story. And the story started that a man was attending the halakha with the sheikh. And the sheikh was reading a letter from Anonymous. And the letter said, Fadila to Sheikh, His Excellency Sheikh. Said, I'm a family of three. I have my sister and my brother, older than me. When my father passed away, you know, the next day, his lawyer came and he brought a will. In that will, my father said that one third of my wealth to be donated to build a masjid. And one third to support the open organization. And the rest is worth distributed in the new. And my older brother stood up and took the wheel and threw it and threw it. This is the plot, he said. Mu'amara. We will not implement this. You know, even if my father will come back alive, I will not do it. So after three days, the lawyer came. He withdrew all my, my money's father from the bank and distributed it. And then I said to my brothers and sister, I'm going to donate my portion of inheritance to build a masjid, to fulfill the wish of my father. And then he said, my... My brother-in-law stood up and said, man, you need that money. Maybe you're sick. You need for operation. And also, look, those people who work for orphan need to cut their hand and their leg. They are cheater. They're dishonest. And then my older brother said, we need to, to sell that, the stores. You know, we don't want to deal with the rent. And I said that I'm going to buy it. You? I said, yes. If you want to buy it, you have to pay, give me double. That's okay. I paid them. I asked lawyer to bring all the renters. And I told them, that, look, I am the owner of the store now that my father passed away. And we need to write a new contract. And I told them that the income from the renting, I'm going to give it to orphans. And all of them suddenly said, if that's your purpose, you know, write whatever rent, rent you want. And we'll give you double. And also we'll collect our zakat and we'll give to you to give to the orphan. And he, I said, I was crying. SubhanAllah, Allah is kareem. <laughs> my father, my brother will ask double and Allah just pay now. So anyway, when Ramadan came, all these people who rent his stores now, he brought a lot of money. He said, this is a lot. He said, we collected from our family too. Subhanallah. So the brother's long story, the short story, he said, and then in the end said, Sheikh, and Natija Kamayali. The result of all this is following. He said, my son, when he was born, had a problem with, with his brain. And then he fell down. And then he was in a coma, you know, a few months ago, in the hospital for one month. And then he recovered. And also, uh, it's not only recovery, his defect, his illness is gone. He's perfect. And doctor came to me, was surprised, said, most people who have this kind, it never recovery. I think maybe you did something that nobody knows except you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I just cry. The second, he said, uh, uh, my, my, my older brothers, he end up in the jail. He had problem with the bank and a lot of debt. And then my brother-in-law, he went join a party in the New Year and somebody gave him a drink and he cannot move his hand. 
And he asked her, okay, sit down. And suddenly he cannot move his leg. Remember he said he was accused. People working for the orphan have to cut the hand. Subhanallah. And then, and then put into emergency. And doctor said they have, they have to cut because they have the disease called Gergarin. Dear brothers and sisters, we learn from this story as following. Number one, if you want to need to do any good deed, do it now when you are in good health, when you have power, you have everything. Don't write in the will. We know what going to do with your family with your will. It's very, very important. Do it now when you have it. Number two, Allah SWT said, Hal jazaul ihsani illa al ihsan. Is there any good, you know, any reward for good except good? Alhamdulillah, Allah SWT given all privilege for this brother who fulfilled the wish of his father and the good to the orphan and everybody. And the last one, we need to know the knowledge of what we call wasiyah, the will, al hiba, and so on. Because I have experience, somebody wrote the will, he didn't understand about the will. He wrote the will, you know, in the, good, the Prophet said, La wasiyata li, li, li waritin. You cannot write the will to your family that deserved inheritance. For example, give my, father, my, my son this, this uh, house, for example, it's haram. Because they already have a portion, Allah will decide it. If you want, just give it, that's called hiba. Right? People, do you understand it? I have to deal for five years because I cannot fulfill his will as against the Sharia. Right? And many things. So, so inshallah, this tonight, we're going to have a, this very important subject. We have two scholars. We'll, we'll talk about the, the inheritance, the hiba and so on. So please come, inshallah. Allahumma ja'ala minal ladina yasmullu qalal fayat tabiyuna ahsana. Allahumma hina ala islamu sunnah wa tawafana ala imani wa tawbah. Allahumma baik lana fi awladina wa afikum ila ta'atik wa rzukna birrohum. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasanatan wa qina adhab al-nar. Allahumma gfil lil mu'min al-mu'minat wal muslimin al-muslimat al-ahya minum al-amwad. Inna inna ka sami al-da'awad ya mujib al-hajat ibad Allah. Inna Allah ya'mun bil adhi wal ihsan wa ita idhi al-qurba. وينهى أن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يأذكم لكم لا تذكرون أذكر أذكركم وأقيم الصلاة